Welcome back to the Film Cynics on CFAX 1070. Stephen Bryan sitting in on a Sunday afternoon talking movies, TV, and pop culture. We are joined this week by our special guest, the Mad Hatter, from uh, all the way from Toronto, from the dark of the matinee. Mad Hatter, how's your uh, visit been? It's been great. Actually, you guys couldn't have timed this any better because, you know, Mad Men ended last week. So I didn't <laughs> what I was going to do with my Sunday, and now here I have that. <laughs> why you gotta, why you got to go there? Uh, yes, uh, those, uh, those, who been, those who have been following along <laughs> online uh, at uh, thefilmcynics.com have been probably observing that uh, there's been a little bit of jousting going on about uh, whether or not the, uh, Mad Men is worth watching. Uh, the good news, uh, I'll tell you, is that it's... Uh, all both the uh, first and second season are available to watch on Netflix, which I now have. Uh, so uh, maybe if I'm really, really, really bored, I might actually take the time out to watch an episode. I am. Two. I'm planning on watching Mad Men on net- Netflix sometime before Christmas. Ooh. Before the end of November. Let's put it that way. Wow. It, it will it, it, give it about four or five episodes. I say any show. No, not not just Mad Men, to be fair. Any show. You need yeah. to give them a few episodes to really grab it. And and you will quite enjoy these characters. And uh, this, well, I've heard that from so many people had her, and they keep telling me That's that. how they get you. They, they want you to say, oh, just give it a couple more. That's how they okay. get you. Let's put it this way now. At least it's easier to get. Exactly. Okay. Could, okay. Could, I won't feel bad about stealing it. Could I just get a quick explainer? Because I did watch a little bit of one, and I watched uh, uh, Don Draper kind of freak out because somebody was investigating him, like he yeah. was his national security or something. Right. So that's is that the crux of the series, or is that was just one little bit of? No, it's one. It's one thing that's always hanging over him is without giving too much away. He's not exactly who he says he he is. Right. And while it doesn't really matter in the day to day, if it was a matter of national security, it's going to come back on him in a big old hurry. Okay. Well, I, unless unless what he really is is an alien, I'm not terribly interested. No, you'd be surprised how interested you are. All right. It's, it's fair amazing. Enough. It's amazing the lies these people tell. <laughs> Well, okay. This week we've been uh, we've been uh, robbed of uh, Tom Bosley, who uh, passed yeah. away this week, uh, best known as uh, Mr. C, uh, <laughs> Howard Cunningham from Happy Days. He also uh, was the the cop in uh, in the Murder She Wrote and uh, the uh, those that mystery show where the Father Darling Mystery. That's the one. Um, so uh, as a tribute to him, I thought that I would try to make Mr. Cunningham look even better as a TV dad by chronicling the top five worst TV dads I could think of. Uh, so uh, I've compiled them on a nice little list that you can see on our site at uh, thefilmcynics.com. Um, Brian, uh, it is a good little site. We're going to jump in at number three. Yes, because we can't do all five. It just takes too long. We figured <laughs> out it's better just to do three. And number three was one that I immediately put down when you texted me and asked me who are the top five dads, worst yes. dads. This was like my number one. <laughs> and it's George Bluth from Arrested Development. Ah, uh, so, yes. He, he's uh, he's the king of uh, dysfunction, and that's that's no accident. No touching. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, to be fair, and what I was thinking to myself when as, I was, as I was putting him down, any member of the family could sit in this spot. So whether it's Tobias or Job or Michael, they all kind of can fall into that slot. But they only do it because he is the one who set the mold for them to follow. Yes. You know, if he wasn't that, such a bad dad. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that Michael's actually a pretty good dad. Uh, well, that's, the, that's, that's the rub there, is that he's not really that good of a dad. He just thinks he's a great dad. Exactly. He's not he, a great dad, but he's a better dad than his own father. Well, yeah, for well. sure. Everyone is. I'm a better dad, but I don't even have any kids. <laughs> <laughs> that you know of. Um, now, um, yeah, George. So George Bluth, I think, with between the boy fights and uh, constantly getting Michael to get after his approval and pitting his kids against them and whatever him and his wife did to Buster, uh, <laughs> plus their adoption of Anyang, uh, Anyang. Yeah, all together. Uh, yeah, he's he's one bad dude. Oh, sorry, bad dad. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so that's my number three. Number two on your list kind of surprised me since I totally forgot about him as a father. <laughs> Philip Bauer? Now, Philip Bauer belongs on there. Okay, so those who, uh, who are not familiar with a show called 24, there was this killing machine named Jack Bauer who went around uh, saving the world from nuclear explosions and the nerve gas and whatever. Um, what was the thing that made Jack Bauer such a hard, hard man? It could have been his dad, Philip Bauer, whose ultimate transgression was murdering his younger son so that his younger son could not spill the beans about his own treason to his older son. Yes, I think that was under torture. 
And right. they're going to put that under torture in there. So, yeah, so there's, that's, that's the family vibe we're going with with Philip Bauer. So while George Bluth was guilt, guilty of some light treason, <laughs> uh, Philip Bauer was guilty of heavy treason. Did you ever... Did you ever it was kind of strange that they gave that role to, to Cromwell, too. <laughs> you don't expect him to be that kind of a stone-cold killer. Well, yeah, see, it's that well, was, unless, unless nice... you're a fan of uh, L.A. Confidential. But, uh... This is true, too. Good that, point. That Very was well. a nice turn, though, because when I saw Jack's dad as James Cromwell. That'll do, pig. That'll yeah, do. you kind of think, oh, it's going to be a nice dad. It turns out, nope, not a nice dad at all. <laughs> but i I got I to ask, how did they miss casting Donald Sutherland in that part? Yeah. Was I, he busy? <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have been a little too haggard seeming to be like a virile dad. I think Sutherland is. It would have been too obvious. Yeah, yeah. James Cromwell, you know, is <laughs> Well, yeah, I, well, I can I can see him. He's, he's he's pretty much fits the mold as an elderly arms dealer selling suitcase nukes to uh, uh, to Russian dissidents or whatever he was up to. Who knows? Maybe twenty four doesn't pay as well as Visa card ads. Yeah, well, you know, if you if you, if you were watching that, you could probably sit and watch the Ford commercial followed by. A minute made commercial, and then you'd have uh, Sutherland and Sutherland doing it together. That's right, that's how they appear up here on TV together. And you're number one on the list with a bullet. <laughs> it couldn't go any other way. No, Homer Simpson. <laughs> uh, I'll mace you good. <laughs> Uh, I, he, uh, I think, exemplifies uh, poor parenting, but at the same time, great parenting. Uh, it, it's clear uh, from years and years, like 21 years of the show, that, one, he loves his wife so much, and yeah. he would be totally destroyed without her. And two, he actually really loves his kids, because like, otherwise they really would be dead by now. Yeah. Uh, he is the prototype for the American... You know, typical American male, which is why, like, this is like the you know the group the groups for the American family and all these these kinds of things. They should all be crying themselves to sleep because he's been so effective and such a poster boy for parenting follies. I think the big thing with him though is that he means well, right? Like when when it comes to Homer Simpson as a dad, I always come back to the episode where they where you find out why he's still at the power plant, right? And it, you know he's got that collage of pictures of Maggie, and he's oh. overwritten the 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 sign that says remember you're here forever yeah and he's he's rearranged it to say do it for her yep you know that that that's homer simpson for me not so much the guy who loves to throttle his <laughs> eldest son well you know maggie has got him out of some t- tight scrapes more than a couple times she's handy with a pistol oh, and yeah. with a rifle yes yes i think homer's just good, glad to be on this list because he's been around for so long <laughs> he's, he's paid his dues as being a bad dad and a good dad at the same time. Exactly. It's kind of now redeeming did, at the end. Now, did Tony Soprano or Al Bundy make this list? Al Bundy got a... He, actually, somebody mentioned Al Bundy earlier, and so he would get an alternate. Tony Soprano, yeah, he belongs on here. There's a I, lot of bad dads. There's a lot of them out If you want to see the rest of the list and you're wondering who four and five are, you can go to the com slash blog. And find out more. We're going to take a break after that wonderful little plug. And we're going to come, when we come back, we're going to break some titles out of the vault. Stay with us.